Hello everyone, my name is Matt, and today I will be showing you how to submit tickets using the One Call Access program. Before we begin, it's important to know that the One Call Access program is state specific. What that means is that if you submit tickets in California, you will need to use the California version of the One Call Access software, and vice versa for excavators who submit tickets in Nevada. You can find links to both these versions in the description below. An easy way to verify that you are logging into the correct state's One Call Access software is to check the background image of the login screen. California's login screen will display a picture of the San Francisco skyline, and Nevada's login screen will display a picture of the famous Red Rocks in Nevada. If you don't have an account within the One Call Access program, you can sign up by clicking the Sign Up Here link at the bottom of the login screen. After you have logged into the system, you will see the dashboard. On the dashboard will be your ticket stats that will show a brief breakdown of the amount of tickets you submit and have open. You will also be able to see a graph of how many tickets you submit in a month. Below that will be your recent ticket history, which will display recent tickets you have created or recent actions you have taken on existing tickets. To access our customer details, we can click on this icon in the top right hand corner. This will provide us with our unique customer ID. This information will be useful if you ever need to contact our center over the phone. Our damage prevention specialists will be able to quickly and easily access your account by providing them your customer ID. You can also view and edit all of the other information listed here, including your password. After making any edits in the system, make sure to click the save icon to save the changes. Let's close this side menu and take a look at the left-hand menu options. The dashboard is currently what we're seeing on our screen. Under New Ticket, we will see Message of the Day and Service Announcements. Clicking these buttons will display important information as determined by our staff. If there is a new message you haven't seen yet, a red New icon will appear next to the button. We have a nice little welcome message for us there. And a reminder that any ticket I submit before our cutover date won't be valid. That's good to know. If we click on the history section, we will be able to look at all of our previous tickets. Remember that these tickets will be specific to you and your account. We have options on how to sort and filter the tickets for easier viewing. We can also search for a specific ticket number or a city that the ticket was submitted in. We can also narrow the date range and when the ticket was submitted, or we can clear the date ranges by clicking the X next to each date. If we click on a ticket, we will be able to see the ticket details, dig site polygon, and members who are notified about the request. You also have the ability to make a secondary action on the ticket by clicking the actions button in the top right hand corner but we will go over that in more detail in a later video. To create a new ticket, click on the Home Menu button. Then click either New Ticket on the left-hand menu or on the top right-hand corner of the window. We will need to select what ticket type we are planning to create. A normal ticket is a request that is submitted within the legal requirements of a ticket start time as outlined in your state's excavation law. In California, that's between two working days and 14 calendar days from the current date. And in Nevada, it would be between two working days and 28 calendar days from the current date. If you wish to begin digging before the two working day notice, you may select short or rush notice. Keep in mind that utility operators will still have until the two working day notice to respond to any request and that selecting a short or rush notice ticket will not guarantee that the utility operator will be able to respond before your work begins. You can also select an emergency or ag slash flood control ticket if your work falls under the legal definition of these two categories as outlined in your state's excavation law. If you are submitting tickets in Nevada, you will not have access to rush or ag slash flood control tickets. Most of the questions will contain a list of drop down selections that you will need to choose from. Please select the option that most accurately describes the work you will be performing at the site.
When selecting a work begin date, you will need to make sure that it matches the ticket type you chose earlier. For instance, if I am submitting a normal ticket in California, then I will need to select a work start time that falls within two working days and 14 calendar days from today's date. If I were submitting a normal ticket in Nevada, then I would need to select a start date and time between two working days and 28 calendar days from today's date. If I selected short, rush, or emergency, the calendar options will change to only allow me to select dates that reflect those ticket types. Make sure to choose the correct time in the drop-down selections here. In the Project Owner field, you will need to select the organization who owns or manages the project you are working on. If you were hired as a subcontractor, you would need to make sure to select which company owns the project, not necessarily which company directly hired you to perform the work at the location. After filling out the information in step one, you can move on to the mapping portion of the ticket in step two. You can choose to look up a location by an address, intersection, or GPS coordinates, which is listed as XY. If you plan on using GPS coordinates to pull up the location on the map, make sure that your GPS coordinates are in the decimal format, also known as NAD83. The map is integrated with Google Maps and will also allow you to search for landmarks, businesses, parks, or other non-address specific locations. Just type in the location as you would when using Google Maps. I'll search our offices at Underground Service Alert. This information is only being used to pull up an area on the map and will not be included on the ticket. The map will zoom into our office and have a blue crosshair icon over the area. To zoom in and out of the map, you can click on the plus or minus button here or drag the bar up or down. You can also use the scroll wheel on your mouse. To pan across the map, left click and hold to drag the map in a specific direction. If you would like to measure a distance without highlighting an area on the map, you can click on the ruler icon. You can then click on the map and drag your mouse to begin your measurement. The ruler tool will show the measurement in feet and miles and will also have the bearing that you are heading in. As I use the distance tool and add points on the map, you'll see two sets of measurements in the length column. The measurement on the left will tell you the total distance from your starting point to where you're currently at on the map. The distance on the right in parentheses will outline the distance from the previous point to the point that you're currently on. You can double click or press the escape button to end the measurement. Underneath the ruler tool is the pin tool. Using this tool will allow you to place pins on the map for your reference. Just drag your pin over a specific area and then click to drop the pin. You'll notice that the pin will change colors once you've added it. When you are finished adding pins to the map, click the pin tool again to deselect it. You can also change the map from satellite view to street view in the map layers menu. In this same menu, you will be able to toggle specific layers that may help you when mapping out your dig site location. One of those layers is the parcel layer. This will show you the listed address, if known, for a specific area on the map. Take a moment to look over the additional layers available to you. Once you find the area on the map where you will be digging, you will want to select the mapping tools and draw out your dig site. It's important to completely cover your work area as that will determine which utility operators are notified about your work. If you're working at a single point, you can use the circle tool to draw a circle around that area. Just click, hold, and drag your cursor to change the size of the circle. The measurements will include the diameter and radius of the circle as it's drawn on the map. Once you let go of the mouse, the area will be highlighted. This red area will represent your work area on the map. You also have the ability to edit your mapping. Click the edit button and then click and hold a white point on your mapping to move it or change the size of the polygon.
If you ever make a mistake, you can click on the delete tool to remove the layers and start over. Clicking the polygon tool will allow you to add points along the path or area of your dig site. This tool allows you to precisely highlight your dig site on the map. Just start clicking on the map to add points. As you add points, you will see a measurement that measures from your last point to the location of your mouse. You will also see the square footage of the area that is being drawn. Remember, tickets cannot exceed a half mile area except in certain circumstances. If you are working on a highway with an on or off ramp, a railroad, a waterway, a power pole corridor, or pipeline right of way in a rural area, you will be able to submit a location with a maximum distance of two miles on one ticket. Otherwise, you will need to keep your tickets under the half mile requirement. To complete your dig site polygon, click back to your original starting point on the map. This will close out the custom shape that you have made. Again, you can change the location of this polygon or its dimensions by clicking on this icon. After you have completely highlighted the limits of your excavation project, click next. The system will now need you to confirm the location of the area. The information that you enter into these fields will be included on the ticket as part of the dig site location. So if you are working in an address, you will want to list it here, as well as the closest intersecting street. Currently, the map does use a reverse geocode system to determine what address you're working at based off the area that you highlighted on the map. In some cases, the address may change depending on how you highlighted your area on the map. You will want to verify that the address is correct and make changes if needed. If you are not working at an address, you will want to include the intersection that you are measuring your distances from. We will talk more about these location types later. Click Next once completed. In the Dig Site Location Details, you will need to provide a description of where your work is located in the Additional Details field. In this case, since I am working in an address, I will need to describe where on the property the work will be taking place, such as front of, back of, left or right side when facing, north, south, east, west, etc. If your work does not take place at an address, you will need to provide distances and directions from an intersection to the starting point of your work, and then describe the work area with distances and directions from that start point. We will show some more examples of different location types in just a moment. Currently, 811 uses three pieces of information to describe and illustrate where you plan on digging. Each piece of information has its own specific purpose, but all three are used in conjunction to confirm that the locators are marking the correct area. Discrepancies between these pieces of information may cause locators to feel that there is an issue at your excavation site. This could cause them to send the ticket back for clarification or require you to submit a return trip notification once all your pieces of information match. For this reason, it's important to make sure that your white pre-marks in the field, dig site mapping, and written location description all match when submitting your ticket. After providing the information about your dig site, you'll then need to read and confirm that you acknowledge the following statements. Once you have confirmed the location description, dig site mapping, and agree to the disclaimers on your ticket, you can submit your request by clicking the Submit button. After submitting the ticket, a confirmation of the request will pop up on screen. This will include the ticket number, dig site mapping, ticket details, and affected utility members. You can download the confirmation sheet by clicking Actions and download confirmation sheet. You will also receive an email with the ticket confirmation. Now let's go over some basic locations. If you are working at an address or posted lot, you would select street in the search type field and then enter either the address or street that the posted lot is on. If you are having trouble finding the street, you can also search for a nearby landmark. Remember that this portion of the program is only used to pull up an area on the map. 
The information you enter here will not necessarily be included on the ticket. After the map has pulled up the area, use the map tools to find your dig site and draw out the area where the work will be taking place. In this example, I will be digging in the front of the address. So I will use the polygon tool and click around the front of the property until I completely cover my dig site. Using the satellite view really helps me to make an accurate polygon around my dig site. After I have completely mapped out my dig site, I will click Next and confirm my dig site location. As mentioned before, sometimes the system will automatically fill the street address field with the address of the mapped out area based off of Google Maps. Since this information will be listed on the ticket, you need to make sure that this is the correct address or street of your dig site location. Since this address is not the address where I'll be working, I will change it to the correct one. Confirm the city and then enter the nearest intersecting street to the work area. You can also add a subdivision name or lot number if working in a new subdivision in this field. In the dig site location details, I will include a description of where on the property the work will be taking place in the additional details field. You can describe it as front, back, left, or right side when facing, north, south, east, west side, and etc. Just as long as it describes where on the property you will be working. Since my work is in the front of the property, I'll list working front of property. If you don't have an address, then you will need to describe where your work is located using two intersecting streets. Choose intersection in the search type field. Then enter the first street and second street in the boxes below. Enter in the city that the work is located in and then click search. The program will now attempt to find the intersection and if successful, it will display it on the map. If your work is taking place at the intersection, you can use the circle or polygon tool to draw out the location of your dig site. Let's say that I'm working on the northwest corner of this intersection in the sidewalk area. I will draw the specific area on the intersection with the polygon tool. In step three, we will need to confirm the dig site location by entering in the first and second streets in the fields below. Remember, this information will be listed on the ticket, so please verify that the information is correct. In the dig site location details, we will describe where on the intersection the work will be taking place. Since I am working on the northwest corner of the intersection, I will write northwest corner of intersection of Port Chicago Highway and Arnold Industrial Way in the additional details field. Keep in mind that you will need to write out the names of the streets in this section and avoid abbreviations whenever possible. To look up a point location on the map, you would simply look up the intersection or nearby address to get you in the right area. Then you would use the mapping tools to highlight the specific area where you would be digging. If you are a distance away from the intersection, you will need to give that distance in feet or miles along with a compass direction. If your work is taking place on the street, you'll need to include what side of the street your work is on. Keep in mind that you can only use up to two moves to get to your work location. If your first move follows along the road, you would write it out like this. At a point 200 feet north of West Flamingo Road following South Durango Drive, and 50 feet west of South Durango Drive. If it's as the crow flies, you would write 200 feet north and 50 feet west of the intersection of West Flamingo Road and South Durango Drive. If you are working an area larger than a single point, you would first need to describe the starting point and then describe your work area from there. If you're starting from the intersection, you will want to word it like this. From Bates Avenue, go 200 feet north on the west side of Commercial Circle. Note that because our dig site location is along the road, we are required to state which side of the street that our work is on. 
If you are starting a distance away from the intersection, then you can describe it just like a point location. Then you would describe your work area from there. Starting at a point 200 feet north of West Flamingo Road and 50 feet west of South Durango Drive, go 50 feet north, turn and go 50 feet west, turn and go 50 feet south, turn and go 50 feet east, back to begin point. If you are working on a street for the entire distance between two intersections, you would write it out the following way. All of Bates Avenue from Commercial Circle to Sprig Drive. It's important to note that a location like this is used to describe work being done from the entire distance from one street to the other street. It's not used to describe a single point between two intersections. If you would like more information about how to submit tickets for specific types of locations, head to our website, undergroundservicealert.org, or our YouTube page at USA North 811. Here you can find in-depth training videos that will teach you how to submit specific types of locations online. If you have any additional questions or concerns regarding online tickets, you can email our web operations department at weboperations at usan.org.